Let me give you a few proven tips to build a successful website. So it's really important to understand that when you are trying to really have an online presence, you want to go for the stars, right? You want to shoot for the stars. So here are the pro tips I want you to pay attention to. First of all, you need to design for desktop and mobile devices. A mobile responsive site automatically adjusts images, text, and design elements to show up quickly and appropriately for a mobile phone, right? Because the thing is, nowadays, a lot of folks are actually accessing websites through their mobile devices. So you want to make sure that your sites remain mobile responsive. Most modern site builders are mobile responsive from GoDaddy to Wix, but even those there there are maybe may not be 100% perfect. So be always sure to always preview your designs on both desktop and mobile screens of different sizes. And if you notice any errors, you can adjust your designs by changing up to uh, like changing some elements. Maybe it could be the size or even removing certain elements on specific screen sizes. You also want to consider pre-built templates and themes. So the, the terms theme and template are usually interchangeable. They are pre-built page designs that usually include menu navigation with the most common pages, home, about, contact, blog, a header, and a footer. Most themes, in our view, will include simple imagery and text, which you, you can replace with your own content. And this you need to replace this anyway. Otherwise, your sites will actually resemble uh, your competitors or somebody else's. You don't want that, right? You can often customize the global template to best meet your needs as well. And most site builders will have a variety of free and premium themes to come to choose from. So using this can help you get a well-designed site up to uh, like, really, you can get it up and running real fast. And uh, then if you were to build the site from scratch yourself, having said that, not all themes are created equal though. So be sure to preview all your pages to make sure there are no inconsistencies or errors as you add your content. So number two, number three, you want to add an SSL certificate. So a secure sockets layer certificate is a file that encrypts data transfer to and from a website. So when someone visits your secure website or en enters information in any fields on your sites, forms, username, password, credit card details, the SSL certificate keeps that, that data private. It's important to have that security on your site and for the end user and having an SSL cert can also help to improve your ranking in search engines. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. Next thing you want to do here is you want to monetize your website. So there are multiple reasons why you would want to build a website, maybe for information purposes, to direct local traffic to your brick and mortar business, to build a brain or to sell products or services. And if you're looking to make money with a website, there are just as many ways to do so. You have e-commerce, for example. So one of the most obvious ways to make money online nowadays, at least, is to sell products on your website. If you go this route though, you want to choose one of the best e-commerce platforms or pick a website builder that offers e-commerce templates and built-in shopping carts. A lot of them have that. So it's either it's either you go with a, a great supplier, a great provider such as Shopify, or you go with GoDaddy, which is not like a, like a, an e-commerce platform, but you do have to choose their e-commerce plan. Same thing with uh, Wix or, or Zaru or other players, okay? It's important to understand that you need to also think about third-party plugins because third-party plugins can provide what you need to build an e-commerce site and market your products online. You also need to find a wholesale supplier or producer for the products you plan to, you plan to sell and ways to market your products and brand. So if, if basically, uh, you can consider selling on marketplaces such as Amazon, eBay, or Walmart as well. So you can either go with an e-commerce marketplace that's Amazon, eBay, or Walmart, or you can go to the e-commerce platform. You go with Shopify, Wix, BigCommerce, WooCommerce. It's totally up to you. You also need to think about affiliate marketing. If you consider yourself an influencer in a particular industry and your website is aligned, you may want to look into affiliate marketing. You can actually review products and or services and recommend your favorites on your site with an affiliate link. Companies with affiliate programs pay you for clicks or sales of the products or services. So this is kind of like a great opportunity. So the thing is that, you know, we are still talking here about the, the, the uh, like 
that if you want to build a successful website, you need to really think about monetizing uh, your uh, monetizing your, your website from the get-go. And see, everything I'm telling you here, you need to do it like from the get-go. Do not actually wait afterwards, okay? So number one, you need to actually, you need to think about uh, designing for desktop and mobile devices. Number two, consider pre-built templates and themes. Number three, add an SSL certificate. Number four, monetize your website. So we are still in the monetization aspect of your website now. So when it comes to monetizing your website, first of all, e-commerce, of course. Number two, affiliate marketing. Number three, try to sell online courses. This is a uh, one avenue to actually make money. So if you want to monetize a website, you sell online courses or digital products. Often entrepreneurs offer courses, ebooks, and guides for a low price as a hook for prospects to then sell them a bigger package, such as a ticket to an in-person convention or a multi-course class. And so this works well if you are an expert in your field and you can educate or coach others in the same industry. In other words, it's not just about you trying to razzle, dazzle your, your audience with the uh, information or knowledge you, th you, are, you want them to think you have that in reality you don't have. Okay. So if you have to go that route, make sure you, you know exactly what you're talking about and you can talk about it for hours and hours and hours with passion that never wins. Alternatively, you could offer memberships to your sites for ongoing advice or courses. And if you go with the membership option, make sure you choose a website builder that allows you to create password enabled pages and to process payments online. The, the payment processing part is really important because otherwise you will not be, be able to monetize your operation. Another way to actually monetize your website is actually to offer ad space. So selling space on your site for banner ads is something that will be more viable as your business matures. You need to grow your audience and page views and page sessions before advertisers, advertisers are willing to pay bigger bucks for real estate on your website. There are automated platforms you can use to offer ad space that advertisers bid on, or you can sell your, your site space directly to companies. If you want to go to, if you want to go the automated route, you can choose a, a platform such as Mediavine. You can use the ad thrive. For example, you can use, you, you, there are a lot of them here, you know, the, those, uh, ad networks so they will actually help you out they help they'll help you uh, basically get revenue they will place ads directly on your site so you don't have to do the hard work they, they will do the hard work for you all you need to work on is to actually drive traffic to the sites and have uh, longer sessions on your site by the way boss i want to quickly remind you of today's topic i'm giving you tips to build a successful website I want to give you the approach you need to really think about when uh, when you really are thinking about building a successful website. Let's talk about transferring your site to a new website builder. This is an important element. So whether you have outgrown your current website builder or you have found a better deal elsewhere, you may need to find at some point that you need to transfer your domain name and website to another provider. Now this could be a, this could be problematic in some cases, but if you do it the right, the right way, things can be really simple. The easiest site migration solution is if you use a commonly supported content management system such as WordPress. So many website builders offer site migration services to move your entire site over to its servers. So manually transferring a website from a DIY site builder is likely to fall on your shoulders and you may need to recreate your site from scratch with a new template. For example, if you build a website using Squarespace, you will not be able to migrate your existing site and design to say Wix because those two builders are, they don't have compatible sort of uh, platforms. So the thing is that I want, I want to talk to you. I want, let me give you the steps you need to follow right now if you want to transfer your site to a new website builder. Number one, you want to sign up for a new web hosting provider or website builder. Number two, you need to download backup files. So here I'm talking about so this, the site map, the images, etc. You need to create a list or take a snapshot of your of your website design for reference. And I'm talking about all the pages. If you don't have that many pages, take a picture of all the pages. 
you need to create you need to actually find a similar template or design your website from scratch on your new site builder platform and then you also need to transfer your email if applicable and domain to the new server and go live one thing one word of caution though you need to keep in mind that domain transfers can take days or even weeks and during this time your website will be offline so make sure you give your website visitors plenty of notice of this downtime and stay in touch with them via your social media channels otherwise you might lose that traffic which you don't you do not want to have anyway and so you can then turn the transfer into a bit of a grand reopening and so if you like to boost traffic to your rehomed website so this is kind of cool because uh again sometimes you know companies do it, do it all the time it's called sometimes rebranding of course they're not losing the website or they're not really starting a new website but they you know it, think of it as a rebranding exercise and the way you go about it will be really successful if you do it the right way. So it is, it is what it is. The big question is, do you even need a website builder? No, you don't. You don't. If you have experience with uh, coding, you don't. But if you don't have that, that experience, then you do. If you want to create a website and don't have experience coding, a website builder is the easiest way to do it. The other option is to build your website yourself, but this requires knowledge of coding or hiring a professional, right? We're talking about having knowledge of uh, PHP, CSS, HTML. Now, the benefit of hiring someone is that you have complete control of, of how the website looks. But when you are working with a website builder, you will likely come across design challenges, that the website builder does not support. For example, let's say you want a drop-down menu, but the theme you are using doesn't fall, doesn't actually offer that feature, right? You may also prefer a particular template, but find that you are not able to change the color theme. Let's say you, you want to have brand consistency, but the color theme that you actually are looking for that really fits your brand is not available in the new template. What, what should you do right now? Should you change the template? And how long should you uh, should you continue changing templates? Because you have a website to launch, right? So it's really important to look at those uh, little things that be can become big things. Each website builder and each theme within it has uh, different limitations, and you often only learn what they are as you go. And so if you don't need complete creative control, you will find that the best website builders offer uh, more than enough features to build a professional website. But the question is, what, what are you looking for? What are your requirements and how accurate you want to have your creative, like how, how much control you want to retain during the design process, during the creative process. This will actually determine how, whether or not you'll be able to find a WhatsApp builder that actually works with you. But overall, nowadays with all the advance that we have seen in the last few years, when it comes to the drag and drop builder sort of phenomenon, it's just a lot better to go with the drag and drop Especially if you do not, like, even if you don't have, even if you have a creative talent, it's just better to start from, uh, start with, from scratch with a drag and drop builder and take it from there. Sometimes it's even better to go with a template and just uh, refine and tweak the templates to suit your needs. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. I'm giving you tips to build a successful website. Let me talk to you about the steps you need to really pay attention to here. The thing is that how much should you pay for a website? It really depends. You can create a website for a personal project for free. If you don't mind a subdomain and display ads like Wix offers it for free. GoDaddy, the same thing. You have a Weebly also to make a small business website. You should expect to pay about $200 to $300 as an initial investment and maintenance will likely range from $5 to $50 per month, depending on whether you have an online store. If you have an online store, then uh, you need more maintenance, then uh, the price will go up. And so in terms of the best website builder today, it really depends on what you're looking for, right? So in our view, the top three web builders available today are Weebly, GoDaddy, and Squarespace for general general use, of course. And, and these platforms feature pre-built themes and drag and drop interfaces, making it easy and affordable to create a functional, well-designed website. 
I mean, Wix is kind of cool. Also, when it comes to templates, Wix has uh, all kinds of templates. And uh, but if you if you are if you want to focus specifically on uh, on e-commerce, go with Shopify, for instance, Shopify or BigCommerce or WooCommerce. And you also need to pay attention to the scalability because website builders are highly scalable and your plan can easily be modified to meet the needs of your growing team. If you outgrow even the top level package of your service, many vendors offer uh, enterprise level functionality with customized pricing. It may be worthwhile to get in touch with your system's customer service team to learn more. And in terms of security, don't worry about don't worry any, about anything at all because because most website builders offer cutting edge technology. They are usually ahead of the curve when it comes to keeping their sites secure. They do this by keeping their customers' website protected by using top end technology. And because of this, most website building companies offer some of the best security options available on the internet. And so, if you are looking for a free website builder, you have many of them. You have Wix. You have Site123, you have Ucraft, you have Weebly. However, again, I just I need to insist on the fact that these free website builders do not allow you to create a website that only includes your branding. Their brand names, for example, may appear in the form of watermarks in the free website domain or footer of the website. So they also often have limited storage and uh, other needed features for building a fully developed website. So, you know, it is what it is. So to close to this conversation, I want to really give you some information about the, the length of time it takes to build a website. So how long does it take? Well, it really depends on you. It can take somewhere from one hour to one week or one month. The time it takes to build a website varies depending on whether you are using a website builder, creating the website from scratch, or hiring a professional site designer to create your website for you. On average, what we have seen in our experience is that you can expect to go from ideation to creation in 14 to in 10 rather in 10 to 14 weeks if you choose a website builder with an easy to use editor you can theoretically build a website in less than a day if you have content ready to add to your sites and so basically to build an to build an e-commerce website you need to actually start by choosing a cms this is very important a content management system that supports e-commerce sites or allows you to use shopping cart plugins and payment processing then you need to build your e-commerce websites with a theme add products, test your links, and finally launch your site. And in terms of uh, like having a website, it, it's not the only thing you need to do. You need to host it, right? Every website on the internet starts with a hosting service provider. So to choose your website, choose a CMS through a web hosting provider or a web builder, website builder, and purchase the service. This is kind of cool. You have to purchase the service. And many web hosts and website builders offer a free domain name for your first year. So you should be able to register a domain through your hosting service. Then you simply connect your domain to your web host and build or migrate your website. And uh, so, and it's very easy once you actually have a settled, if you sell it on a domain name or a few in case the one you want is not available, just head on to uh, a domain registrar to register a domain name. You have many options from which to choose from, from uh, GoDaddy to MailChimp to Namecheap, okay? But keep in mind that you may also be able to register a domain name through your web host. Perhaps, you know, just purchase and register your domain. That's a lot easier to go through, to do it through uh, your web host and then point your domain to the appropriate name server so your website appears with the proper web address. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. Into this conversation, I gave you a few tips to uh, build a successful website. So I gave you the pro tips, the approach you need to follow, and the steps you need to actually follow again to finalize the whole process. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <music>